All right, so continuing on regarding the uh, measures of central tendency and variability in the data as it relates to, in this video, part four, a greater focus on standard deviation. So the last time we left off, we were looking at some Excel data. So in Excel, um, if you were to do it manually, where you actually sum the squares and get that number, and then you divide that number by n over 1, which was 3,134, and then you do the square root of that final number, you get 2.38. That's the long way. The easy way to do it is to type in the command, if you can see here, equals STDEV, STDEV, and then you highlight um, your actual row or column, C2 to C136, and then you hit enter, and that gives you 2.38. You could also do STDEV. and then highlight the whole column, let's see what we do. And as long as you have all the, no numbers below here, again, 2.38 is our final number. Doing that in Stata, very simple. We just do sum life expectancy, and then uh, sum life expectancy gives us our standard deviation. So SUM stands for Summary Statistics. Um, summary uh, Statistics, so Summary Life Expect 14. And then if we type in the command detail, we get more information. It also gives us the standard deviation and the variance. And the variance here is 5.665, which variance, in fact, is the standard deviation squared. So if you're interested in what variance is, it's the standard deviation squared. Or if you're interested in what standard deviation is, it's the variance um, to the 0 0.5 power, or the square root of variance, gives you the standard deviation. You can do multiple variables at the same time. I could do rural percent and get detailed information on both life expectancy and rural percent in the same command. I can get rid of detail and put in a lot of variables, life expectancy, rural percent, female percent, percent African American, and I can get the mean for all of those for the counties in the United States in this example. Pretty simple to do, um, so much easier to do it that way than um, using your, you know, doing it by hand or in Excel using a bunch of formulas. So there are the commands very easy and uh, ultimately they're doing the same same formula so what does the standard deviation mean like why do we care about it so one standard deviation in a normal distribution means that 68 percent of the data should fit with in one standard deviation of the mean assuming a normal distribution if your distribution is not normal then these numbers are not uh, not necessarily true so a normal distribution, as we said, has this, this shape to it, and a uh, mean of like 77.75 should have numbers that are plus or minus 2.38 from it to be within one standard deviation. So in this case, the one standard deviation of the mean goes from 75.37 to 80.13. Easy enough. Now when we go to two standard deviations, two standard deviations should collect 95% of the data. Three standard deviations should, you know, um, actually would reflect 99.7% of the data would fit within three standard deviations of the mean, assuming a normal distribution. So let's put this into some more direct um, ways of looking at it. So we already know for one standard deviation that it should go from 75.37 to 80.13. So put that 75.37 in your mind. So that's one standard deviation below the mean. 
So I'm going to ask, does Owsley County, beyond this, uh, we'll go with the 68% range. Is it in the outlying 32%? So for a normal distribution, 95% of the observations should be within two standard deviations. So 75 is the low number. Owsley County is 70.21, so it's definitely below 75. So what about two standard deviations? Well, I say it should be, you know, 95% of the data fit within two standard deviations. So two standard deviations is from 72.99 to 82.51. Owsley County is at 70.21. Again, that's outside that range. So it's even more than 95%. It's different than it's different than 95% of the data in the sense that it's more than two standard deviations from the mean. So it's, a, it's getting to be an outlying group. So when I asked, is this beyond two standard deviations, we remember each standard deviation is worth 2.38. In this case, 2.38 times two, so now two standard deviations means that each standard deviation, or two standard deviations is worth 4.76 years. So the actual range should be the actual average, 77.75 plus or minus 4.76. So we're getting down, you know, this area here. 95% of the data should fit between 72.99 and 82.51. So Owsley County is 70.21. So it's below our second standard deviation. It's below 72.99. So the next question, is Owsley County beyond this 95% range? Actually, now it's beyond this. That should be 95. That should be 99.7%. Is Owsley County outside this 99.7% range? And in fact, we could even say, is it in this 0.13? That's even smaller number. Is it in this 0.13? So are we beyond three standard deviations? So for a normal distribution, 99.7% of the observations should be within not two standard deviations. That's wrong. That should be three standard deviations. 99.7 should be within three standard deviations. So now it's between 70.61 and 84.89. So that's three times 2.38 plus or minus the median, the median value being like the 77. So that range is 70.61 to 84.89. So it's 7.14 from 77.75 to be beyond that. Owsley County is 70.21, just below 70.61. So yes, it's beyond three standard deviations from the average life expectancy of the U.S. It's a big time outlying, it's an outlying group by a lot. So I'd say being beyond two standard deviations is a lot. Now you're beyond three standard deviations. You're in this minority for the United States. So that's how standard deviation is sometimes used uh, in terminology. Somebody might say, the life expectancy for Owsley County is beyond three standard deviations from the mean life expectancy for the United States and thus warrants intervention or something along those lines. Now, as we mentioned when we looked at the status summary detail uh, command, variance was provided and variance and standard deviation are quite similar. In fact, they're uh, essentially uh, just mathematically different by whether or not you square it or do the square root of one another. So how do we calculate variance? So variance is sigma squared. And sometimes you'll see big S and little s. But variance is 2.38 squared. So sigma is our standard deviation. So variance is sigma squared. So 2.38 squared is 5.644 data that have a lot of dispersion around the mean have larger variances and they also have larger standard deviations. Now if you knew the variance was 16 and you wanted the standard deviation knowing that variance is the standard deviation squared, how would you get it? 
So pretty easy. You would just do the square root. The answer is the square root of 16, or 16 to the 0.5 power, or 16 to the 1 over 2 power, or the square root of 16, which is 4. Easy enough. The next thing we're going to discuss will be standard error. Um, and standard error is, is, is pretty common in scientific literature as well. And it's a measure of how variable the mean will be if you repeat the study many times. And it's, you know, a sample, you're dealing with little n, not big n. So you're dealing with a sample. The larger the sample size, less variability. Um, and less variability or less error, to say the least, in your ability to detect, you know, differences between two groups and your ability to estimate the actual true uh, average for a population. So standard error relates to the standard deviation, but it takes into consideration the population size. So in order to get standard error, standard deviation is often required knowledge. So if you have the standard deviation, or sometimes known as, as sigma, so standard deviation is sigma, if you have the standard deviation, or sigma, over the square root of n, you can get the standard error. So which will be larger? So if you have a standard deviation over the square root of n, which is going to be larger? Is the standard deviation going to be larger than the standard error? Well, this is always going to be a, uh, a whole number. So my take is standard errors are always um, a lot smaller. And you'll sometimes see scientists report standard errors instead of standard deviations in papers because it makes the actual numbers look better. So you can pull up this data to do a couple examples really quick. So if uh, you had a standard deviation of 4 and a population of 18, n is 18, and you calculated the standard error, standard error equals your standard deviation divided by the square root, or in this case with the 18, to the 0 0.5 power. Standard error would be 0.94. The standard deviation is 4. So in this case, uh, in all cases, standard error is going to be smaller. So if you had a population um, that was even smaller, like only 3 individuals, we do this again and replace the 18 with 3 individuals we still see a smaller standard error. You wouldn't do a sample with three people, but maybe you will. I don't know. Needless to say, standard errors um, are smaller numbers, so you'll see people report them in papers um, just because of the optics. And a trained scientist wouldn't fall for it, but the lay public um, might think that a standard error um, makes your data look better. And if they don't know the difference between standard error and standard deviation, they wouldn't know any better. So here's an example on water quality averages over 26 days. Here's the average temperature, 25 point, I'll bring it closer. Average temperature, uh, plus or minus the standard error. So 25.4 plus or minus 0.38. So you'll see this uh, in the scientific literature. So again, what impact now does sample size have on standard deviation. Also, what does it have on standard error and confidence intervals? So, more samples, generally the better, but at a certain point though, samples also cost more money. So we're going to discuss the impact of sample size as it relates to standard deviation and standard error more here in the future. So. Based on what you know about standard deviation and standard error, standard errors, are they larger or smaller than standard deviations? So you should know that standard errors are going to be smaller than standard deviations, and then they're based on standard deviations. Now, if you have a large sample size, you should also know that your standard deviations are going to be smaller, and so will your standard errors. So to be